applications to economics. So we have our cost function, revenue function, and profit function. And if you take the derivative of those, there's something in economics called marginal cost, marginal revenue, and marginal profit. So we're going to find out what those things mean. What does marginal cost mean, marginal revenue, marginal profit, and look at them in the context of a certain question. So here's the cost of dollars of manufacturing X units of a product. So it, looking at this equation, the way that this equation is designed is that if you don't produce any objects, if X is zero, it still costs you $2,000. That's probably the cost of the machine that you bought to make things, and then when you never sold one, you're screwed, you've spent $2,000. you sell the machine to another Hopefully. Okay? And this is also designed, this cost function that I made, I designed it so you've got $40 put in every time that you make one, but the more that you make, the cheaper it gets because you get more efficient or you can buy your product for cheaper. So that is your cost function. If you want to find your revenue function, well, revenue means just the amount of money you bring in. So if you sell them for $80 each, your, your revenue function is just 80 times x. Profit is how much money you actually make. So your profit function is actually your revenue minus your cost. So that's in function notation. If I wanted to write this in explicit notation, Oh yeah, plus 2,000, thank you. And if I combine like terms and distribute things here, I would get 40x plus 0.02x squared minus 2,000. So again, if you don't sell a single one, you're going to lose $2,000 because of the cost of the machine to begin with. OK, so these are our, our regular functions, and these are functions that Sort of common sense, people can think about profit, they can think about revenue, they can think about cost. But now when we start to think about marginal revenue, marginal cost, and marginal, which one haven't I said, profit, okay? What do they mean? The marginal revenue, it's an estimate. It's an estimate to say, if you sold one more unit after 100, how much more revenue would you bring in? Okay? Now, our revenue, if we think of our revenue function for this one, it's just $80 each time. So if you sold one more, how much money do you think you would bring in? $80 more, right? So that is your actual revenue. When you go from 100 to 101, can you see that you will actually bring in $80 more revenue? Yes. Now, when we find the marginal revenue, which is the derivative, the marginal revenue, which is the derivative, what's the derivative of 80x? It's 80. Now, that is an estimate. It's a pretty good estimate. It's exactly right on, okay? But that derivative gives us an estimate of what's happening when you go from 80 to 81. Okay? Because you're finding the tangent at that line, and you're saying if my slope of that tangent line is 80, that means if I would go over 1, I'd have to go up 80. So the cost of selling one more unit would bring in 80 more dollars. Now this one's really obvious because it was such a simple equation. Marginal cost. This is now estimating how much is it going to cost to produce, if you've already produced 100 and you want to produce one more, how much more is it going to cost to produce that next one? So the marginal cost will be by finding 
the derivative. And if we take our equation for cost and do the derivative, we're going to get 40 minus 0.0, .0 is it 0 0.02 or 0 0.2? So it'll be 0.04x to the 1, and the 2,000 doesn't come into play, right? That $2,000 you put out at the beginning, you've already spent that. You don't spend that again. And so if we want to figure out what is the marginal cost at 100, plugging in 100 here, 100 times 0.04 will be 440 minus 4. So the 101st unit that you produce is only going to cost you $36. I just used it for the hundredths one because I wanted to find our question originally, when 100 units are being manufactured, find the following. So the equation, this is my equation for all my marginal costs. This is my specific marginal cost at 100. How much would it cost to produce one more? This is how it'll cost me $36 to produce the 101st one. Now, if we want to compare, what's that? It, it'll say how much it would cost to produce the 102nd one. Yeah, it's always going to be the next one. And the reason for that, I mean, our cost function was some sort of parabola, right? Can you, our original cost function here, can you see that it's a parabola that's going down? Okay. So if we imagine a parabola going down, okay, and you want to find out marginal cost at 100, so let's say 100 is right here, this is 100. What the derivative does is it says this is the slope of this line. If you went over 1 and up, that would be your slope. And according to this, this would go up 36. And it's an estimate because it's not perfectly on that parabola. If we want to see how much does it actually cost to produce the 101st one, how would you find that? Well, if I put 101 into my cost function, It'll tell me exactly how much I pay for a 101 function, right? And if I put 100 into my cost function, it'll tell me exactly how much I paid to produce 100 of them. And if I subtract those two numbers, let's put those values quickly into our equation here. I'll type it into my calculator. Okay, so so what I did is I plugged in a hundred and one into my original cost function and it tells me that to produce 101 items, it's going to cost me $4,035.98. To produce 100 of them, it's going to cost me $4,000. So how much did the 101th one actually cost me? $35.98. Now, to get these values, I had to plug 101 into that equation, calculate it. I had to plug 100 into that equation, calculate it, and I had to subtract the two. I mean, it wasn't a lot of work, but by finding the derivative, I just had to plug 100 in once, and I got 36. And it's a really good estimate. It's not perfect, right? But it's an estimate, yes. If the function is more exponential, you call it seven, let's say, then that would be a significant change? It might, might make effect. And what happens with this parabola? Eventually, 
If I make more, I'll be like making so much money. My costs will be negative, which is not possible either. Okay? And then finally, our marginal profit. So is it 100 because the next is a slow gain, so the next one will be 100 more? Yes, it's 100 because, again, if you think about plugging it into 100, whatever slope that I get from that is like going rise over run. So the fact that I get 36, I can think of that as 36 over 1. So if I go over 1 and up 36, that 36 represents where it would be at 101. And so that's why it's an estimate for the next unit. Because the slope is something over 1, rise over run. And so here's our marginal profit. So if we find and take our profit equation, I can't remember it. 40 plus 0.02x, so it's going to be, and that rest of it doesn't matter. And so at 100, it's going to be $44. And we might have known it was already going to be 44 as an estimate because our revenue stays constant at 80. And if our cost to produce the 101st one is 36, then we're going to have made $44 on that last one. Technically, in reality, if we found the actual profit, we would get $44.02. But the marginal profit, which is an estimate for the actual profit, and so this allows businesses to quickly check where things are at. Is it going to be worthwhile to produce more? At what point should we stop? What kind of decisions do we need to make? These kind of functions can help them with that. If you're starting to market at 